Good morning, YouTube. I hope you've had a wonderful few weeks with your students. I hope you haven't missed me too much. I know I have definitely missed you guys, and I always appreciate when you guys reach out to me to make sure that I'm fine and everything is fine. I just have been spending a little bit more time on the weekends refilling my cup. As you can imagine, being a full-time teacher and then spending time video editing and preparing the next episode can be a lot, especially because I teach Monday through Friday, and then obviously I have to video edit on Saturday to get it ready to post on Sunday. That's kind of the schedule I've been doing. So I can't guarantee that I'm going to post every week, but I definitely hope to continue to check in with you this year. I'm going to really try to do at least two times a month, but I don't know, you know how that schedule is going to fare. Maybe sometimes it'll be more than that. But either way, I promise I will always be posting things that you can use right away in your classroom. And today is no exception. So today I thought, I thought I'd bring you along with me and we can talk about planning because I do get a lot of questions about like, how do you plan your lessons? Like, what are you doing in order to plan for all the different levels that you teach? So this year I have two preps, I have honors chem and then I have AP chem. And so I thought I could just show you some of the things that I do to help make my life a little bit easier whenever I'm planning for the coming week. Now I will say that typically on Sunday is when I do my planning, but because I wanted to put a video out for you guys this week, I thought I would do my planning in school today. And hopefully that will make my life easier because I'm really going to try to plan up through the holiday break. So I've got about two weeks and I think I can do it and I'm taking you guys along for the ride with me. Now, every year since I started teaching, I have done this and it has helped me tremendously, especially when you're a science teacher and you don't have such an easy schedule, especially with like double period labs. I have created every year one of these templates. So what I thought I could do is go through and show you what each template is and like how it works and what I use it for. And then we can go into the actual planning process. Here is the template I was talking about earlier. So this is actually for my previous couple of weeks of lesson plans. So we have a six day cycle at my school. So uh, meaning that um, we're not gonna necessarily see the same classes on every single day for the same amount. So for example, you'll notice like on day two and day five, I have a double lab period with my uh, period one AP class. With my honors class, I only have one double lab period, and that's specifically on day three. So it'll rotate throughout, obviously, the week. Um, so I won't, for example, always have a lab on Wednesday. It really just depends which day of the six-day cycle it is. I do have two duties this year, and that's just because um, I am teaching an overage due to the extra AP class. As I mentioned, I have three AP classes, so I have a lot of contact hours with students. And so this is the basic setup of my template. Very simple yet very effective really helps you to see exactly what I'm doing in a glance so you'll notice like for example I don't write any objectives or anything I'm just labeling what I'm doing so I'm just labeling like what I'm doing with my students it's not maybe it just I think it really just helps me to just see when I can plan for tests especially with AP like there's really not a whole lot of wiggle room for testing because I need to make sure I finish before May um, but this is something that makes my life so much easier and you'll notice too um, I did so I did change the template this coming week because I wasn't really using for the week of because obviously it's a six day cycle. But um, I did take that off for the next set of templates. But what I do try to do is put in the date and the day so that I know exactly what day we're talking about. So other than that, that's pretty much what I do to keep my lab period straight, keep everything straight. It just makes my life so much easier. And then you may have questions about like what this four, five, six, seven is. Basically, this corresponds to lunch periods. So like it's literally a four or five uh, class period. So we're taking a, a period four and a period five and throwing them together. Our lunch periods are around 24 minutes long. So they kind of come together. And then with passing time, it ends up equating to the um, 50 minutes that we were talking about earlier. Same thing with my six, seven class. It used to be the old schedule was crazy. I had like, I remember when I first came to the school, the periods were different lengths. It drove me absolutely insane. And um, I would have more time with my period, um, like six, seven, like my lunch period classes. It was it was not fun, um, but it's a much more um, balanced schedule now, I think. And I have a better handle on like, you know, how I'm gonna be scheduling everything. Now, besides my template, a newer thing that I started doing with my classes, I probably started doing this maybe about five years ago or so, is creating a daily agenda for every single class, every single period. Now, the daily agenda up front takes a lot of work, 
but once you have it, it's done. And I just continue to reuse slides and maybe change the date. And I love it because it really keeps an accurate record of what I did during the class period. So the other thing that I use is my daily agenda to help plan. So if you notice, I've got all these slides in here from the beginning of the school year. Now this is actually the old presentation from last year. And so down at the bottom, I've hidden these slides. So these slides are all hidden. So these are all my assignments from last year. And, and basically I will um, kind of one by one make it so that they can be visible. So right now I've made it so that it's uh, the slide is skipped. I do not give the students access to the actual Google Slides file. Instead, what I do is I actually take this and I publish it to the web. So when you publish it to the web and then you click on the slide and maybe I'll go to the top here. So when you go to the slide and you actually click, right click on it and go to skip slide, when the students access it from the web, you can't actually see those slides. So it makes it so much easier. I don't need to do any like copying and pasting. So I really love using this to help prepare me for whatever planning I'm gonna do. And a lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm changing things. I'm still a little bit of a newer AP teacher. This is my fourth, I guess my fourth year teaching it. Um, so I do rely heavily on what I did, but a lot of times I, I do change it because I'm still like not completely happy with what I'm doing yet. So I'll change it and then obviously I can, you know, copy it and reuse it for the next year. And what I usually do is archive it. So at the end of the year, I don't like delete it or anything. I archive it so that I can use it and I can open it up whenever I want to. Now, if I were to go down in the um, slides presentation to where I was last year, these are just some extra slides. I didn't end up using these backgrounds. So it looks like last year I decided to do some whiteboarding and digital card sorting with students. I am not gonna do that this year. I feel like my students have a little bit more of a stronger background in intermolecular forces. That's actually what we're in right now. So they have a much stronger background with intermolecular forces. So I don't feel the need to do that digital card sort. Instead, actually what I'm doing today is I'm doing some stations. So I actually have another lab, so I, I remove the stations, it's a little crazy. I remove the stations so that I could do the lab and then I'll have to put the stations back, but it's basically an FRQ set of stations. And it actually worked really well today. It was a brand new set of stations. Um, I thought the students did great with them. And uh, so the plan really, I think, is for us to focus on explanations of intermolecular forces and those macroscopic properties. So that's my goal of the stations. And then hopefully on Monday, we'll come back together and talk about it. But I don't really feel like they need that practice. So then I think what's gonna happen after that is we're going to go into types of solids. And so as I look through this agenda, what I'm literally doing on this sheet is I'm writing down what I did and seeing if in fact that it will kind of correspond to the times that I've provided. So I, I do feel I am ahead this year with my students. Um, last year, I want to say I tested on intermolecular forces after Christmas break, but I'm happy about it because that means I have more time to review. But this is essentially what I do. I, I go through my slides presentations. I kind of write down what I did. If I And then sometimes I'll take out my binder with the resources and I'll look at the resources that I created. And if I'm happy with them, then I'll continue to use the same resource but if I'm not, then I'll you know kind of go back and change it or look for something else to do with the students. Now I will say for my honors planning, it's a little bit more time consuming because it has been a hot minute since I taught honors. I want to say since before the pandemic, I haven't taught honors. So it's been a little rough because I'm like, oh, like, if I'm preparing these kids for AP, I wanna kinda of change what I'm doing. So it does take a little bit more time for honors, but my process is still the same. I still bring up, I have a very old slides presentation when I first started doing the agenda, um, and I kinda of pull that up and look at what I did, and I am changing that a lot. I'm changing that a lot more than I'm changing for the AP class. And like I said, it, it takes time to do all these things, but I find that it definitely makes my life easier in the long run. So when I sit down to plan, as opposed to like trying to pick all the different things that I want to do, I can do this in about an hour. I can kind of write down everything that I'm going to do. And then from there, I can copy and paste any slides or any pieces of information, change the dates on the slides. But this is really my process. This is what I tend to do. So 
I don't know if this helps you as far as like what I do to plan for my classes, but I thought I'd share a little bit because I do get a lot of questions about it. Um, when I was more of a teacher-centered teacher, typically what I would do is I would write down like which um, you know day of the lesson we were looking at. So like for example, day one, day two, day three. Um, but it was still the same exact process even though I didn't have any kind of agenda. Anyway, I have missed you guys. I hope you're doing well. I am doing great. I'm excited for the holiday break. I am really hopeful that I'll be able to check in with you guys next week or the week after, at least before break. We got two more weeks, so hang in there. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I'll make sure to check in with you guys within two weeks.